Hey guys, so we have a somewhat unique video today. You may have seen recently that Bethel Church out in Redding, California made headlines because they invited Kenneth Copeland to come preach at one of their Sunday evening services. Now, I think this caught a lot of people off guard. Maybe they didn't recognize that Bethel Church and Kenneth Copeland were connected in any sort of meaningful way. But regardless, they certainly took a lot of flack in the aftermath. In fact, so much so that in a recent Sunday morning sermon, one of their pastors, Chris Valentin, addressed it during his message. And it's actually Chris Valentin's comments on Kenneth Copeland that we want to look at in this video today. But first, hello friends, my name is Matt. Welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for being here. If you could please take a second to subscribe, I greatly appreciate it. And it helps me in my efforts to reach more people with Christian content on YouTube. All right, so as I said, we're going to listen to Chris Valentin talk about Kenneth Copeland, and then I'll come back and kind of make my remarks on what is taking place. But in this first clip, we're going to listen to Chris Valentin explain to us why he is so eager to listen to Kenneth Copeland's messages. It's so beautiful. We had Kenneth Copeland here. I don't know if you got to see him, experience him. And I, um, you know, I, I was never like a part of the Word of Faith movement as such. But I listened to him all the time. He had great influence in my life in my early years. And, you know, he was, a, he, he was you know, he, he taught a lot. And, you know, when somebody is 20 and they're teaching out of the Word of God, how many know if they're teaching accurately the Word of God, it's inspiring? Yeah. Like, you get something from it, and it, the, a child could teach us the Word of God if it's accurate. But when someone's 86 years old and they become the wealthiest minister in America... I think what you taught me a long time ago, now you have fruit. Now I really listen to you. All right, guys, before I get started with my assessment, I just want to say this up front. My heart in all of this is not to pick a fight with anybody or be argumentative or slam any people, but I do have some very genuine concerns with this whole situation between Bethel and Kenneth Copeland, and I think that my concerns are very warranted biblically, and so I want to present those concerns in a loving and kind and hopefully gentle way, and so if you disagree with me that you would prayerfully consider what I am saying and seeing why this is a big issue, what is taking place here. So let's now get to the content of what Chris Valentin was saying. He said that the main reason that he was eager to listen to Kenneth Copeland's teaching is because he sees the fruit in his life. And when he says he sees fruit in Kenneth Copeland's life, he specifically points to the fact that he is the richest pastor in the United States of America. I don't know what his estimated net worth is now. Last I saw, it was somewhere around $700 million. And so Chris Valentin definitely is pointing to Kenneth Copeland's checking account and saying, that is the reason that I want to listen to this man because he is incredibly wealthy. Friends, doesn't that seem like a wrong motivation to want to listen to somebody's teaching? Just because they have a lot of money does not mean that they are rightly handling God's word or that they are a person of character. There are plenty of rich people in the world who are not doing things that are honoring to God. And when I look at scripture and I see what is listed as good fruit in the life of a believer, I don't see anything about finances mentioned. In fact, I want to actually read it here. This is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, talking about the fruit of the Spirit. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. So we see all of the fruit of the Spirit there having to do with character. It really concerns me that Chris Valentin would say Kenneth Copeland is the sort of person that we need to listen to because he is rich. That seems like really terrible reasoning to want to listen to somebody. And I'm not going to say what Chris Valentin's intentions and motivations are and what's going on inside of his heart. I, I don't know those things. But what I can say is it, it sounds like a tinge of greed when you say things like that, like this is the person who's making the most money. Oh, I need to learn from them. I mean, do you see how it at least sounds like maybe that is a part of the motivation behind it? Again, I don't know Chris Valentin's heart, but certainly you're encouraging at the very least, you're encouraging other people to bite and play on their own greed, right? Like, oh yeah, he makes a lot of money. Ooh, I need to go listen to him. And this is a big problem. Let me read one more scripture for you. This is from 
1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 10. It says, If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, he is puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words, which produce envy, dissension, slander, evil suspicions, and constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and deprived of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. So we see the warnings against being greedy. And friends, listen, I'm not against anybody making money. I know that's always the argument that gets thrown out there. You believe in a poverty gospel and everybody's supposed to be poor. No, I don't believe that. It's not a problem if you make a lot of money. The question is, how are you making that money? And what are the motivations of your heart? If you're a successful businessman and you have a charitable heart and you want to give it and you have good fruit, Christian fruit from Galatians 5 in your life, I have no problem with that. But if it's motivated by greed, and if you noticed at the beginning of that passage, if you are twisting God's word and you are not rightly handling the Bible in order to gain your money, then we have a big problem. And that's what we really have to figure out with Kenneth Copeland. And we're going to answer that question in a little bit. I'm going to play some clips. But first, we do have one more clip of Chris Valentin speaking about Kenneth Copeland. So let's go ahead and check that out. And I realize people are like, oh, you know, I don't know what people think. Like, he fleeced the flock and stole widows' inheritances. It's like, no, he actually believed God. <laughs> See how quiet it is in here? What I'm getting at is, is that if a wealthy businessman, like if Elon Musk became a, a radical believer and he stood up here and said, I got billions of dollars because I trusted God, we like, amazing, that's beautiful. But when God blesses someone like an Abraham or a Solomon in our day, we're like, well, I don't know what he did. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> and the same people will pray for God to pay off their house. The same people will pray for God, Lord, can you please provide money for my education? And a man tells you, I, God told me, do this, speak this, say that, I did it, and I became the wealthiest man in America who's a preacher, and we're like, well, yeah, but how did you get your money? <laughs> and we let the media tell us, don't follow him because he has fruit. All right, guys, I have some real concerns with that last clip because to me, this is something that commonly occurs anytime anyone tries to point out something wrong that is taking place within a movement, or at least it, it, it is very regular, and I've seen it happen from Bethel Church a number of times. So let's say someone like myself comes and in a very humble and gentle attitude, it says, hey, listen, I have some concerns about Kenneth Copeland because he is taught X, Y, and Z, and I think those are really dangerous, potentially heretical doctrines, um, and I think it's really concerning that someone who teaches heretical things and has not repented of those things is having a platform at your church. Rather than addressing the issue of what my arguments are, you just go straight to the, well, you're jealous card or, or something else. It's like an attack on character. And this is exactly what happened here with Chris Valentin, because he would say, if I'm using his argument there about someone like me, that I am just jealous of Kenneth Copeland because Kenneth Copeland did exactly what God told him to do. He said exactly what God told him to say, and now God has blessed him. Well, friends, I guess that is one possibility. One possibility is that I could be jealous of Kenneth Copeland. The other possibility is it's exactly what I stated already. Kenneth Copeland has some really heretical teachings, blasphemous teachings that are on record. We have plenty of examples of him doing these sorts of things. He twists God's word regularly and particularly twists it in areas involving finances in order to get people and trick people into sending him money. So we have to make some sort of determination. Is it just that people like me are really jealous of Kenneth Copeland and we're upset because God is blessing him because he's being obedient to God? 
Or is it because Kenneth Copeland is a false teacher and a heretic, and he has been platformed by one of the most influential churches in America? Well, I have a handful of clips that we're going to watch back to back of Kenneth Copeland. It's about four and a half minutes, so you'll need to bear it with me. But we're going to see about that fruit that Kenneth, or sorry, that Chris Valentin was speaking about because he said that Kenneth Copeland has this tremendous fruit. Well, let's check out these videos and see about that fruit. And I say this with all respect so that it don't upset you too bad. But I say it anyway. When I read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. Let this mind be in you. Let this be the way you think. Let this mind be in you, which was also in the anointed Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And you do not think it robbery. You don't, it, it's not taking anything away from God. Right. To be equal with our Father. And when I cried out to God with one simple phrase, Jesus, come into my heart on the second day of November, 1962. the scepter of righteousness was pointed at me and I became equal with Jesus. God's reason for creating Adam was his desire to reproduce himself. I mean a reproduction of himself. And in the Garden of Eden, he did that. He was not a little like God. He was not almost like God. He was not um, subordinate to God even. And Adam is as much like God as you could get. Just the same as Jesus, when he came into the earth, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He wasn't a lot like God. He's God manifested in the flesh. And I want you to know something. Adam in the Garden of Eden was God manifested in the flesh. Adam had a leash on this earth. And as such, he was literally the God of this world. Who was the biggest loser. Satan? No. God. He was manifested in the flesh in Bethlehem, made alive in the spirit in hell. The goodness of God to love a mess like me. Wow. But he changed that mess. Yes. Right. The day I accepted him as my Lord and Absolutely Savior. Right. He's no longer the only begotten son of God. He's the firstborn from the dead. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was an evening service. And I, I, you know, I just preached Mark 11, 23, 24, and 25. And, and I got over into that Jesus went to hell and he suffered there. And, and, and then he was born again in hell and rose from the dead, the firstborn from the dead. And I realized she hadn't heard the message. I said, sit down, girl. And I preached it just as close as I could get. Got to the end of the very uh, end of it. I said, Gloria, we can have Oral Roberts anointing for $10 a month. <laughs> no, we're part of the name it, claim it, reap it. Yes. That's who we are. Well, and George, hey, we named it, claimed it, blabbed it, grabbed it, and we have it. We do have it. <laughs> we're the one with the airplane. Yeah. Sa. Yeah. Yeah. Airplane, za. Za. Well, I don't understand why God healed them and he won't heal me. Could it be? <laughs> By some stretch of the imagination. Oh, probably not, but could it be? That is your fault, not God's. 
Oh yeah. All right, I should have mentioned this before I played all those clips, but I took those clips from a much longer video that Justin Peters did on Kenneth Copeland. I'm going to put a link down to that in the description, so be sure to check that out if you've wondered a little bit more about Kenneth Copeland's teachings. But guys, I hope just from the handful of clips that I played there that you will see that this man has uttered some of the most horrific blasphemies and heresies that we've ever heard in this country. It's not just one thing. It is false teaching after false teaching after false teaching. And he has not repented of these things. He has doubled down and continued to teach them to this day. That is the reason that I am not alone in my concerns about Bethel Church inviting him and giving him the stage to speak. In fact, there are many Christians who have been at least somewhat supportive of Bethel in the past, and many of them have come out and said, guys, this is not okay to be inviting Kenneth Copeland to come and speak on your platform at your church. You often hear people talk about, oh, you're guilt by association just because they're linked together in some way that doesn't mean they're guilty. But friends, it's a whole different story when you actively invite the person to travel to come to your church and you hand them a microphone and say, please preach. And then after they preach false teaching, you get up and defend them. That is guilt by participation, very much so. And we see here that Bethel supports a lot of the teachings of Kenneth Copeland. I would have to do a whole another video on this, but I would like to point out that Bethel's theology and Kenneth Copeland's theology, while there are slight differences, I want to put it out there, there are some differences. The foundation of what they believe is pretty similar. Um, and I think that surprises a lot of people, but Bethel has a lot of the word of faith teachings involved in what they are doing. So yes, um, they are very much big fans of Kenneth Copeland. Bill Johnson, the senior pastor at Bethel, has spoken at some of Kenneth Copeland's events in the past. And as I said, guys, this is just a very, very big concern. I think many people know about Kenneth Copeland. If you didn't, now you do. Stay away from him. Um, but I really want to talk to the people who are big fans of Bethel. Guys, when I first came to Christ, um, Bethel was one of the first churches that I started watching online. I was watching Chris Valentin. I was watching Bill Johnson. I was listening to their worship music. I was a huge fan. But as I was growing and reading my Bible and growing in the understanding of who God is and what his word says, there would be little things that would kind of catch me off guard. Like that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. And after a few years, I started to recognize, wow, there, there's a lot of false doctrine that is being taught here. Now, I say that um, so that you understand that I'm not some person who's always had a bone to pick with Bethel. I, I have just come to a realization that there are some really problematic teachings and things happening in that church. I do believe that there are genuine believers at Bethel Church. I don't believe that every single person there is a heretic and doesn't know the Lord. I do think there are some genuine Christians who are there. And my heart in all of this is to try to warn those people, you are sitting under some really bad teaching and you need to go elsewhere. You don't have to break ties with everybody in your life. You don't have to be mean-spirited and angry towards the people at Bethel. But for the, the care and the well-being of your own soul, you do need to look elsewhere. And so that goes for you if you're just watching them online. Friends, they are not trustworthy in the things that they are saying, and I could not recommend more highly that you stay away from their teaching. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this is helpful. If it has been, if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. Again, I really appreciate it, and it does help me to get this content out to more people on YouTube. All right, thanks again for watching, and until next time, God bless.